This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Let's uh, let's also keep it going and talk about, you know, the the whole idea of him coming in as a promoter's son. Obviously, Dory's got a ton of respect. Dory Senior, that is. Terry, of course, has a brother, Dory Junior. Um, how hard do you think that was? And I know that you're not necessarily a promoter's son, but you grew up with promoters whether it was Leroy McGurk or Bill Watts, you're really cutting your teeth as sort of the right-hand man of a promoter. And that's no different in WCW with, with Jim Hurd or the WWF with Vince McMahon. What sort of pressure do you think was added simply by the fact that, Hey, you are the brother of a wrestler and more importantly, the, the son of the promoter. Well, you know, uh, Terry never used that as, as far as I can see as an excuse or a reason. Uh, you know, he wanted to make it on his own and he had that great background from his father. He had the, he had the, he had the culture down. Uh, he was still, his game was still evolving. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they, they just, uh, he just, he, he just, he wanted to do it himself, but have, getting his dad, getting him some bookings and then subsequently helping Terry get recognized to a level that he could be trusted and depended upon to be the NWA champion after his brother's run, uh, it certainly didn't hurt things, you know? So, uh, I kind of think I'm a big, I'm a big believer, Conrad, in these, some of these second generation cats, Yeah, men, men are women. They, they have a different edge to them. They have a different feel, a different passion, different motivation. And not all of them, not all second generation guys are successful, right? But, the, but a lot of them were. And I think it was because of how they were raised and, and they knew what was expected of them for Terry and Dory. They knew what their father expected of them as far as, uh, being on time and being reliable and working your ass off and, 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 and staging a great match. So, uh, uh, I'm sure there's pressure, but maybe not as it, it, there's pressure on you when you don't have the talent. And you, and you know that you're getting booked because of who you're related to and, and, or who you're connected to in your social group or whatever. I think there's a lot more of that today even than uh, one would imagine. So, uh, he, 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 he had a, he had big shoes to fill and he knew that if the promoter that he was working for, uh, wasn't satisfied in some aspect of the presentation that they're going to call dad, right? They're going to call senior and senior is going to have a, I don't say the woodshed, but he's going to have a little chat with the boys. Uh, so uh, that's the old school stuff that I like. So, but he was Terry, Terry just had so much talent, but he was a wild child. So right. sometimes that would lead to an old school, kind of a more st structured promoter to wonder what the hell have I done here? Cause this guy's out of control. But the out of control element of Terry Funk was kind of what made him a star. Let's, uh, before we jump into Terry's wrestling career, uh, cause he's going to start working in 65. Oof. Um, some of our listeners, some of our younger listeners who really just grew up with you in the attitude era, they probably don't know what a big player Dory Funk senior was in the business. Can you add some context to that? Well, he was a power broker, you know, uh, uh, Dory senior had, in, had a lot of influence within the NWA and there's several guys you can point to that had the same, you know, Fritz von Eric had that influence, uh, you know, Eddie Graham, a lot of those former wrestlers turned promoters, uh, had invested themselves within the NWA. And that was basically all about who had access to the dates for the champion. That's what it was all about. The champion was, was the thing. And of course, Dory senior had two sons that were NWA champions and both very, very good. They're different as hell, but they were, they were different, uh, in their, their, uh, not just their performance, but their style presentation. Uh, so I, I'm, uh, I'm a, I'm a big believer that 
it was a really, to me, that's a story in itself. How many ex wrestlers leveraged themselves into a territory through their contacts, the fact that they, they were working and, and they were valued draw draws and so forth. <laughs> so, uh, it was just, a, it was a, you know, Roy Shire was a former wrestler, started promoting San Francisco, did it for years and years. Vern, Vern Gagne, AWA. He was smart enough to create his own entity. He didn't want to be beho- beholding to the NWA and the whims of a small group of, of, uh, wrestling politicians. And, uh, so it was an interesting time to be around wrestling. I, I was in 65, I was, uh, 13 years old. So, uh, it, Terry started long before I got really aware of, I was still hauling hay and yeah, playing uh, junior high, junior high football and things of that nature in 65. So, uh, but I'm sure glad I made that, that choice, that, that career choice.